you're using these all the time to recolor cells. Don't do it because what you're doing is recoloring on a cell by cell basis, which means that every time you do something unusual like copy and paste, that is just going to break all of your formatting. If you add in a new column, it, you'll have to redo the formatting. And if you sort of have a Simpsons that you didn't manually highlight with the others, it will not highlight. What you want to do is something more like this, color coding based on selection. So Aeon will turn green here. Um, if I write in another number, it will change the bar chart. And if I add in a new column, it will automatically bring in the formatting unless I choose not to. My name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos on my channel about Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. And this, this video, I would maybe say is the most important skill set that you need for your entire Excel. So let's um, go back to zero by going to clear and clear formats. Most people don't know that exists. If you do that though, you lose your day formats, which is quite annoying. But if you click here, I don't like using these default ones. I like this that has three characters for years. So I do control and hashtag to get there. You might need to press shift as well. Now, an interesting fact, according to the Excel team, this is not called a table. This is a range. If you want to make it into a table, then you make it into a table by insert table. It's the same place where it appears on Word, PowerPoint, Outlook. Um, press OK, make sure that that's ticked, my table is headers, and you get a nice table like this. If you add something new, then it brings the formatting automatically. If you click here, you want to undo it, you can undo it still, but um, you get that option to bring it automatically, which is most of the time what you want. If you paste some data over here, it will not break the formatting and everything will work as you expect it to. Also, if you scroll down, instead of seeing A, B, C, D, E, you see the names of the columns, as long as you're clicked inside the table and you can't see them in the normal viewpoint. You can also filter from anywhere in the table without scrolling back up. Uh, you have lots and lots of other benefits, but in particular, what I'm going to show you here is the formulas. So if I write here, say adults, and then equals men plus women, press enter. Notice that it comes down automatically, which it wouldn't do if this wasn't a table. And in the cell, the formula is referring to at men means the current row for men plus at women. And it's the same formula for each cell. It's not referring to B1 plus C1, etc. It's referring to that for the name of the column. Uh, another place where we see that is if we want to do something on the whole column. So if I do a sum of this entire column, this is now not showing me from this cell to this cell. It is showing me table four, the column called men which means that if I add in another number here, it will automatically get added in the right place. If I'm adding here, then I won't get that same effect, 84. And if I add in another number, it will not change. Now, this is a very, very common error in Excel. If you use tables, you avoid those errors. You get everything happening so much faster and you don't have to waste your time formatting. You also get the table designs tool, so you can change the style if you like, or you can just untick banded rows. You can add a total row if you're too lazy to make one yourself, and you can drag these across. And in each one, you have a drop down. You can choose here a count, for example, um, and then you can untick it, add new rows, and then add it back later on if you want to do that. Uh, you can resize it. You can give it a name. So here it's going to be movies table. So here, instead of saying table four, now it says movies table. Um, that's something that I do recommend doing as well for good practice. And if you want to get rid of it, you can convert to range. And now it's showing me, do you want to convert it to normal range? Press yes. So I'm going to undo that control Z because I love tables and don't see why you wouldn't use them. I'm going to untick banded rows and let's do these. So we're going to select this column and then in the home tab, don't use these, use conditional formatting. Highlight based on conditions, highlight cell rules, text that contains. I'm going to write Aeon or Eon and press green, press OK. And now every time that the word is there, it is in green. Now, if something else becomes Aeon, that also becomes green. And if it says other stuff in the cell, it still contains that, so that's OK. But if it's misspelled, then it won't work. Next up, we're going to select this and we're going to say conditional formatting greater than, we're going to write 15. And we're going to say this is a custom format because blue isn't in the list. Choose a blue color, press OK. 
OK again. Duplicate values. So select that. Conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, duplicate values, and we're going to just press yellow. Press OK. Now all the duplicates are like that. However, if something is not a duplicate anymore, then both of them get unhighlighted. Next up, we have these things. So data bars. Here we're going to get a bar chart inside the cell. As you can see, the max is the highest bar. Zero would be the lowest bar. Uh, we can customize this further as well, which we'll do in a second. So let's do conditional formatting and color scales and do this one. So the highest is in green, the lowest is in red. And if you've got an obvious outlier, then you can clearly see it here. I like this kind of thing when you've got a grid formation. So you can select this and you just want to know what's the highest ones and the lowest ones. You can use color scales. I use this white to green, so it's just one color. And it's a bit cleaner and it just gives you a very quick idea of what the highest and the lowest are. So next up, we've got this pass or fail thing. So this is an icon set. Now you can put it by default like this, but honestly, I think you have to go a step further if you're gonna use icon sets because the defaults are never what you need. So I go straight to more rules and I choose here the tick cross ones. And then I say what my pass fail parameters are. So I'm going to say my pass is above 20 and I don't want the middle one actually. So I'm just going to do 20 in both. Press OK, and then you just have ticks and crosses. Dates, so you might be tempted to do a date occurring, but you don't want this. In fact, I very rarely use this. This is only for today, tomorrow, next month, etc. I'm going to use greater than because actually Excel treats dates like numbers. So you can do greater than date. So if I click greater than, I can actually click on that date. You can do the same with this number or even with text that contains, and then you press OK. And now it's after this date is in red, but you can change the date. So if I change this to be, for example, October, now a different number of these dates are highlighted and selected. Um, you can also have top or bottom, top 10, top 10%, etc. You can choose top five. It doesn't need to be 10. You can choose new rule if you want to add a custom formula. Something that I use that for a lot is to get the entire row highlighted. For example, the entire row will be highlighted if it's Simpsons. And then you can clear rules. So you can clear rules from selected cells from entire sheet, or you can go to manage rules, which is why I use a lot. Here you can edit your rules or you can delete them one by one. If you have, for example, more than one rule on a set of things, you can change the range it applies to. Often it will break accidentally and this is something that's good to do. Uh, you can say that this is going all the way down there and that will be more robust if you add in new rows, etc. Uh, you can also edit the rule. So I'm going to click on this one and edit. I'm going to say show bar only. So I'm not going to see the number, I'm just going to see the bar in the cell like this. So these are conditional formatting and table, which in my mind is the way that you should be changing color of cells rather than using these. In fact, I call this a super table because I think that calling it a table makes it something that you never knew you needed but absolutely you need this. It will make a ton of difference. It also makes your shortcuts faster. If you control space to select the column, now it will select it until the end of the table, shift space to the end of the row. Control A will select only the table. Control A again, will select including the headers. Um, it does so many other things and it's fantastic to use. So one area where you might come into issues is if you have multi-row headers. So over here, my headers are very clearly in rows number three and four. And this will cause a bunch of issues. For example, if I go to insert and pivot table, then it will tell me that it can't do it. That's because of multi-row headers. Um, filters will work in strange ways as well. Now, if you go to insert table, you need to tick this box and it will actually work, but then you need to manually manipulate it because it is pretty sure that this is a regular row of data, which it's not. So avoid multi-row headers also Merge and center is grayed out when you're using a table object because Excel knows you should never merge cells inside a table. You can merge cells outside a table, that's okay, but inside a table, it will cause issues. So if you like this video, then I've got plenty more on my channel. So subscribe if you wanna see more stuff on Excel, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering on my channel. Thanks for watching.